Michael Bent is poised. Ruddock on his shoulder to get the latch on. Bent might get all the way over. Shrill blast from the Welsh referee. And the Zebra ranks breached in the 13th minute by the tight head prop, Michael Bent. Who... Michael Bent, good morning. Um, thanks a million for your time, first of all. Uh, how's it going? You're uh, finished up. You're finished up as a Lens rugby player. You would have finished up and cleared out your locker this week. Uh, surreal? Yeah, it, um, I suppose the last week all felt kind of normal enough as the build up into the game and the, all the rest of it. But um, yeah, I suppose um, now it's uh, when the schedule of training and all that has sort of kind of disappeared, it's uh, starting to feel a bit weird. It's uh, I no longer have um, this kind of idea in my head that I have to get out and do something. Uh, but um, there's still the need, but... <laughs> just no longer have to so no it's a, it's a bit, a bit of a weird feeling but it's um oh, it's good as well you know I, I, I suppose at this point as well it's um we would have been going into a uh into our off season so who knows when when games start being played again and that that might be when things really sink in but uh yeah feel feel all right at the moment anyway interesting you should mention that because i mean like a lot of people speak about that after retirement, the, the lack of a schedule, because um, maybe people on the outside wouldn't realise, but you know, from the moment you land into Lens, and even with COVID, even before you leave your house, there's so many things that you need to do to schedule, like your COVID check-ins, etc. So your day is nearly mapped out up until you arrive back here, what time you eat, what time, where you need to go, what meeting, da, da, da. and to have that then, nearly what you wear as well on a way trip. So um, to have that gone, I mean, it, it, it'll be a huge part of your life uh, gone, but from talking to you a couple of weeks ago, you'll get very hectic fairly soon with 380 cows waiting for you back home. Yeah, exactly. Um, I've just been having a, bit, a few conversations with um, you know the guy, the guy working on the farm back home and, and the old man or the parents, and um, yeah, there's calving is uh, just around the corner, so uh, no doubt I'll be just off the plane and uh, and helping with that. So it'll be. Uh, yeah, I won't won't be short of things to do anyway. I won't be looking lo looking what to do with myself. But um, yeah, it'll be a, certainly a change of pace. Take us back, Michael, please, to those early days. I mean, it's nine seasons. It's been nine brilliant seasons with Leinster, Leinster Rugby. Take us back to those early days. What what was the first of all? What brought you to Leinster Rugby? Where did that conversation come from? And then the early days within Leinster. Well, I. I spoke to a guy in New Zealand and he I mentioned the, the fact that I had an Irish passport and um, so initially that you know I said the idea was that um, coming over to Europe wouldn't be a problem and it was always something that I wanted to do to come over to the side of the world to play rugby um, where exactly that was going to be I wasn't entirely sure because um, you know you can't always just choose to choose where you go but um, I've been um, yeah, I've been working with Greg Feek. He was a, he'd been working at the Hurricanes, so um, I think he he heard I was interested in uh, looking around and um, got in touch. We had a bit of a chat, and um, yeah, it, the offer came up with Leinster to to come on over. And um, at that point, my sister was already living in Dublin, so it um, kind of seemed like a perfect fit to uh, come over here. And um, yeah, so I hadn't seen her in a few years, so uh, worked out quite well. Um, and I suppose at that time I didn't know a huge amount about Leinster but um, I've certainly learned a good bit in the last nine years um, You mentioned your sister there your brother's now living in Ireland as well um, and in your statement that you issued when you retired you also mentioned those roots and uh, your grandmother I think who, who came from just up the road from us here Yep, yep um, Yes, yeah, so and my brother, he, he came over um uh, I was talking to him the other day, and I think it's actually about five years he's been here now. So it's um, doesn't feel like that long, but yeah, time certainly flies. But um, yeah, and my grandmother as well. Um, you know, she had she had a diary that she wrote when she was eighteen, and uh, there's a lot of information in there about the things that she got up to in and around Dublin. So it's been interesting, um, sort of going back over to her side of town over in Rathmines there, and just looking at some of the places that she would have spent a bit of time in there younger years and it's um yeah it's really brought a you know a, a more of a connection to ireland that um you know we're always aware of the the heritage and that but it's it's been great spending this amount of time here and uh yeah i suppose um getting a bit more of that connection to ireland and uh to previous family that was here uh, and you had one 
final blowout before you leave. Uh, you hit the west of Ireland with your brother and sister uh, there over the last couple of days and uh, managed to familiarise yourselves with the west coast and with the Iron Islands. Yeah, yeah, we went, um, with something we'd been meaning to do for quite a while and um, yeah, we'd heard that weather was a little bit shaky over there. It was a bit hit and miss as to what sort of day you'd get, but we uh, got over there and ended up, ended up getting perfect weather and uh, yeah, biked all around the island, uh, clocked up 25k or something on the bike. So, um, yeah. Charlie would be happy with that. Yeah, yeah, that, that would have been, we would count that as a fitness session, I suppose. It's, uh, but no, it was great, great over there. It's, uh, you know, the seat scenery and all the rest of it's um unbelievable like i um yeah i always wanted to get over and have a look around and i'm glad that i was able to do that before uh, finally heading off because who knows what the future holds i'm sure i'll try and get back at some point but what exactly i get to do is uh, a bit unsure so no i'm really glad i got took that off and um yeah some great memories over there talk to me about some of the coaches you've had uh Bancy, please uh i mean like in, in nine seasons and answer there's always going to be coming and going but it's not just head coaches it's forwards coaches as well you've mentioned Greg Feek already and uh, the last couple of years obviously it's been Robin McBride and John Fogarty and and then Leo the incumbent but before that uh, Matt O'Connor Joe Schmidt etc I mean like uh, a lot of coaches that have had you as their prop um, and a lot of them have left an indelible mark on you as a person and as a player yeah yeah um I suppose yeah, we'll start scrum wise. I guess we you know starting with Fiki. He was uh, he's obviously been the uh, yeah scrum coach for Ireland for a good period before um, John took over. Uh, Fogs took over there, um, and then um, you know Robin as well. He's been um, good. He's always you know offers input as well, but he's not he's not going to change anything about what I'm doing. And um, so no, I think he's been great as well. He's always. Um, asked me for my opinion and I've given it and if he thinks it's good he's he's uh, driven it as well so no, I think he's great and um, I think you know he'll be good for Leinster um, moving forward and obviously he'll go well with the Lions when he, on that trip there but um, yeah obviously a lot of other other coaches along the way as well um, yeah Joe was the, first, the head coach when we first arrived um, one thing that struck me about the the whole setup the um, sort of way things worked at Leinster when I first arrived is it was um, I think it was something Joe brought in, but there was no there was no celebrations for tries, which uh, <laughs> I couldn't really get my head around because you know you, you'd score a try, you want people running in and clapping and patting you on the back and uh, you know really getting up for the occasion, but there was something here there was just no celebration for the try, so I always thought that was an odd one. But is that um, why you waited so long to score your first one? Well, there's no there's no point. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, once we started celebrating, I started scoring. <laughs> You're like, them. yeah, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, and uh, yeah, he he was very, yeah, very strict with the way that he runs things as well. The I think the first thing he said to me when I came into the place was, "You get uh, you get to muck up one play in training, and we'll give you that one for free. But after that, don't muck up, muck up anything else." So uh, yeah, the You're pressure, on your guard the, from day one. The pressure was on, yeah. yeah. Um. You mentioned there. I thought it was interesting and uh, around fogs and 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 about trusting you and letting you get on with it. I mean, like, would it be fair to say over the last couple of years you've been doing it as well as you've ever done it? in, in terms of, I mean, like, uh, talking to to Fards yesterday, and he says it, it's it's a nice place to be as a lock or as a, a back row forward when you know your prop is going to win you two, three scrum penalties a game, and now he's chipping in with tries as well. And I think Fards used the word prolific. Uh, to describe your try scoring performances but yeah. over the last two three four years I mean like you've kind of taken on another notch in terms of what you've been delivering uh, on match day for Lancer yeah um, I suppose yeah maybe just backing myself in some of those situations when we get close to the line um, some of the time in the past so you know I might have seen the opportunity there but uh Maybe just added a, you know, thought I'd just jump in in a support role or something. But yeah, I suppose it's more that sort of thing of just um, seeing the opportunity there and backing myself and, um, you know, just ha having a crack. And uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's worked well. So um, I wouldn't go as far as pro prolific try scorer, but uh, we've scored a few. So uh, that's been great. <laughs> You'll take that. Um the highlights of your time here, uh, Benty, uh, what would you have up there as kind of the standout moments? Um, 
pinpointing exact standout moments is um, tough. You know, like I suppose, like I've always been heavily involved in the, the you know, throughout the seasons and um, in the parts when the internationals go away, then you know that might be the time where I, um, you know, really start clocking clocking up the minutes. But uh, when it comes to the end of the season and there's the um, playoff matches, is sort of something that I've taken a back seat on uh, for, for most seasons. So. Um, Obviously, the one season that I was involved in the the final for the um, Pro 14 against Ulster there, um, just coming out of lockdown last season and um, being a part of that and being able to actually yeah go out there and win a medal is um, you yeah, was certainly one of the highlights. It was uh, certainly a very proud moment to actually yeah, be a part of that match day squad and um, and uh, enjoy the moment. Um, I think. Also being a part of the um, European, the when we had the final against um, Saracens, we didn't win that, but it was um, still a pretty big, cool moment to be involved in that final and uh, play there as well. But um, other than that, I you know I always have great memories of the um, clashes we've had with Munster at the Aviva and uh, yeah, it's just some of the, some of those games like you know like the nasty ones where you go away to Glasgow and. Uh, play them away and there's horrible weather and those sorts of things like and you come away with a good win like those um those aren't the the flashes sort of fixtures but it's um quite satisfying to to get those and like the five points are just as valuable as well so <laughs> they definitely are not only horrible weather but frozen pitches as well i remember once or twice in scottsdale yeah. um the your legacy in that sort i mean a lot of people have spoken about this over the last two three weeks as you've come to the end of your time here. Robin spoke glowingly, Leo has spoken glowingly, players have spoken glowingly of your time here, but also the legacy and the impact on those younger players. You've mentioned already yourself about, you know, times when the internationals are away um, and you're back here and you're also spending a lot of time with those younger props coming through. I mean, like, what do you think your legacy is or what would you like your legacy to be uh, here at Leinster? Yeah, I'd like to think that I've... Um helped a lot of guys out with uh, the, the way that they've scrummaged and um, I've certainly offered my advice for guys and when I see things that need to be corrected and um, you know there's times where I spend you know we, we start to get into a situation where the um, when you guys come in I might you know be able to easily defeat them in a scrum and but but then as we work work together and uh, you know they ask a few questions and I tell them a few things that I think might help them and that and then it starts to become very difficult for their, uh, and you know they start, might start um, winning a few against me in training so um, you stop the advice then that, that gets annoying <laughs> and then I, I've got to go back and uh, identify as, you know other weaknesses that they might have so it's um, I, I think it's good like it's um, you know, it certainly builds the, the strength of the squad when you can be open like that and share share your ideas and um, you know, and the, by the same way that you know, if I I can say the same thing back to them, what what they're feeling and if they feel any weakness sort of in, in my setup and my and uh, the way that I'm scrummaging. But um, no, certainly I'd, I'd like to think that there's there's guys that are um, you know would think of me and think of like the. The learnings that I might may have offered them, and, and things that I might have helped with along the way. I think it's fair to say, uh, Benty, you know, as, as as much as we talk about your legacy amongst the players and staff and uh, coaches in Leinster, but you've left your mark on the supporters as well. And I'm sure you saw the outpouring of goodwill, of emotion, of love towards you as a player when you announced your retirement. Yeah, yeah, it's um, you know. It, you, you kind of work away and you, you don't really, uh, you, when the fans are in the stands, you, you, you get that and you see people cheering and, and that's great. But I, I suppose in this last year, you haven't really seen the fans as much. And um, to finish up, I've, I've you know, received a lot of messages from people and um, even people seeing me in the street and telling me that, um, you know, wishing me all the best and that, you know, it's... Uh, I, certainly, it's not really something I would have expected, but it's... Um, yeah, no, it's, it's been very nice, and uh, I'm not, um, yeah, I'm not sure what to say about it, but it's, um, yeah, it's certainly very much appreciated, and um, you know, I'm, I'm glad that people feel that way and are happy to to wish me well in the future and, and all those bits. It's not everyone who has an Instagram account set up in their honour either. Michael Bent's pipes, make we see them there. Make two fantastic pipes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Who's yeah. behind the account, Benty? Well, yeah, we, it was kept anonymous for a while, but you, you may have noticed that um, ever since Joe Tamani left the squad, the, the posts on the page uh, slowed down a bit. So <laughs> He's yeah. not getting the content from Japan, is he? Uh, no, I think um, the odd time, maybe one or two things are sent over, but I wouldn't be posting um, big flexing uh, pictures on my Instagram account, so he can't use those. So. <laughs> um, just uh, talking about... so. The road ahead. So, what does the future hold for Michael Bent and Celise and the two kids when you go home? Um, so, yeah, we're going to get home, and um, plan is to get back on, onto the farm. And um, you know, for me, so for me personally, yeah, I'll, I'll get back into a bit of farming and uh, work through that through carving. Um, I had my electrical trade that I've, I've done before I um, started really getting stuck into my rugby. So, I'll. Um, I'll get get back into that a bit as well. I'll probably do a few days a week as an electrician, and um, then a couple of days a week on the farm, just while I'm upskilling and learning on on there. But um, yeah, the the end goal is to take over the farm, and um, as a family, we'll we'll start off living in town, but then eventually move on to the farm, and that's um, kind of where we'll set up base. So, um, but yeah, the kids are both young. Emmy's three and a half, and uh, Eli, he's just gone four months. So um, you know, I. It's great that they're both Irish babies, and um, you know they'll have always have that connection to Ireland. So, um, yeah, no doubt they'll be well, once they grow up, they'll be wanting to come back here, and uh, you know, I don't know whether certainly travel and um, see a bit of the place, and who knows, uh, they might fall in love with it and stay for a good nine years or so, like <laughs> I have done myself. So, um, how special was it to have them in the RES on on Friday evening? I mean, I, again talking to yourself only a couple of weeks ago uh, having fans having family in the RDS looked a million miles away at that stage but things have obviously progressed in terms of vaccinations and obviously Leinster was selected then for one of the test events um, having 1200 supporters there to, wa to wave yourself uh, and Scott and Keen Kelleher and all the other department players off but then to have your family there which is most important yeah I wasn't sure if it was going to be possible so um, I was yeah it was very special I uh, I suppose the easy thing at that time of night is to say it's a bit late for the kids, and um, you know they, and that's probably what I was saying. Or you know, I was saying, <laughs> don't don't bother too much about it; they'll be fine. But um, uh, credit to Celise, she was adamant that they needed to be there and they needed to see my final game for Leinster. And um, you know, they, you know, in the future when we can say that they were there and they they saw that and they had photos on the pitch with with me. But you know, it's not. I, it's, see a few of the other guys that have their kids out on the pitch quite a bit but um emmy's never done it and um so no it was very special to be able to to be able to do that so and she made her big debut on air sports as well yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i should have picked her up and got her got her there and see what she had to say but uh, yeah. Yeah, she, was, she was chiming in from behind yes, anyway she was she was yeah. it was lovely um just in relation to Celise and the support i mean like you came over as a two and you're leaving as a four and i mean like you, you know, in the same way as I was chatting to Scott Fardy about this yesterday. I mean, you, you, you can't be the player you are without that support structure around you. And, and I'm sure your brother and your sister, your brother here the last five years, as you were saying, they play a part in that as well. The support structures that you have around you to enable you to be selfish at times and to be away and to be in training at seven in the morning and all that. Uh, you need that all around you all the time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, there's, there's no way that I'd be able to would have been able to carry on playing without that support because um, you know on the occasions that um, certainly when Eli was first born there was you know it's very tough to just hit off like we don't we don't have uh, parents over here that can come in and help uh, whenever so um, my sister was 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 great with that with um, some of the away trips um, she came in and um, just helping looking after look, looking after Emmy so that she could. Um, you know, being three and a half, she's very busy and wants to be playing and uh, and that. So she was great, and um, yeah, yeah, just couldn't have done it without without them really. But but also for Celeste, like leaving here with um, here on day with two kids to look after while I go off and train and and that, and uh, that's very tough as well. But um, yeah, like I say, couldn't couldn't do it without her or um, yeah, and my sister was very helpful as well. What do you miss most about Leinster rugby, about Dublin, about living in Ireland? Um, yeah, the weather. <laughs> <laughs> I 
you know, in my time here, I've really got, I've really got to enjoy the, the, the Irish culture. I've spent a good bit of time going into, um, going in to find a bit of the, the trad music and that sort of mm. thing. It's something I've really enjoyed. And um, just getting around and seeing the country as well, there's uh, been a good, like, as we were talking before, the trip to Aran Islands, which is, um, which is great. You know, there's so many nice spots you can go to and, and look around. So, I, and I probably haven't seen as much as I, I want to either. So, um, yeah, I do feel I want to see more of Ireland, and um, so that's probably something that'll draw me back in the, in the future. But uh, and also, you know, the people as well. People are very, very good, and um, as we're saying, the, the support that I've had in my time here has been, has been great, and then um, particularly highlighted um, just by finishing up and all the people wishing me well and all the rest of it. So no, I'm so grateful for that. And you'll miss winning those scrum penalties with the brothers. Yeah. That'll be a big one that I'll miss. I don't know what I'll replace that feeling with. It's uh, something special to win a scrum penalty and uh, come up and scream in the opposition face and make them feel uh, <laughs> ashamed of themselves. But... Uh, well, Michael Bent, on behalf of us all in Ness Ruby, thank you so much for all your time uh, in blue and in green indeed. And uh, we wish you all the very best back home with your family and uh, we hope to see you very soon in the future. It's awesome. Thank you.